I think it was probably my 14, 15, something like that, you know, started dabbling in cigarettes and alcohol and fight, you know, little by little trying to make a name for myself and then uh, eventually making a name and then going to court and saying, I wish I didn't have that name. <laughs> A skinhead, a white pride advocate, and a street brawler with two strikes against him, Taz has finally found the key to unlocking his violent past. Eternity? Come on now. I had a short fuse, and uh, you know, and uh, the thing is, like, I'm, I'm not, bra I'm not uh, Mike Tyson, but you know, I was in there. You know, I, I earned myself uh, a name, and um, you know, now I have a new name. I'm a child of God, so that's what that's what I like to be labeled as. So um, we're speaking with Taz, and we're at Set Free Church. That's right. Where, where are you located, Taz? We're at 320 Date Street, San Diego, California. So now. what sort of, what's your congregation consist of, primarily? Uh, good question. So we, we don't like to categorize our church. It's open to anybody. Uh, in the past, people say, oh, it's guys from prison or guys been in trouble. No, we're open to anybody that's seeking a relationship with Jesus Christ. Some of the best people that practice Christianity the best are the ones that have been down the hardest. Well, you know, one of the all-time favorites of the Bible is Saul, you know, his conversion. And, uh, you know, he was out there hunting Christians and chasing them down and uh, giving them the thumbs up or thumbs down to have them killed. So, yeah, you know, we're, God could use anybody that's willing and able, you know, that's what we do here. Oh, have any good conversion stories? That... Um, yeah, you asked me that question before, and the best one I know is mine because I lived it, you know. But, yeah, we got all kinds of... Uh, you know, we, we have A to Z. We have conversions. We have people that are rock solid. We have people that come in strong. Jesus, Jesus, and fizzle out, meet a girl or get a job and bounce out, you know, or go back to old bad habits. So, yeah, we got a little bit of everything here. And that's what the church is, man. It's a it's a church for the for the hurting and the wounded. The church is more like a hospital than a... Than the a church is a thing. hospital. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot, of th a lot of people think the church is like uh, the country club. You come in, you get fixed up before you come here so you look good and... That ain't, nah, that ain't, that's not how we do it. Somebody who's had an adrenalized life like you, played football, been on the streets, been in some brawls, been done all this stuff. Now, now I go, okay, now you're 18 years old. Let's come to Bible study and get a, get a collar shirt Zip on. it. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree with you. I, yeah, adrenaline, uh, all that stuff. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we like to engage here. We're a smaller church and we can engage. And one good thing about a smaller church that I like I've been in a mega church. You're just a number, and in a small, I know a little bit about you. I know your family. I know your, you know how you tick, and we we participate. Everybody, and so we have to be careful not to have people just sit here and just, you know, they're here but they're not here. And so I get what you're saying. Yeah, you know, we gotta incorporate everybody. Um, but th this is church is just a piece of the pie. Then you go home and you take it out. You know, you read your Bible. You you witness to people. You know what I mean? Like attending church is a small piece of the big Christian pie. I believe. But you've had an adrenalized life. How do you, how do you fulfill that adrenaline gap? Well, you know, <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah, and, and, and if I'm speaking to myself as a younger man, hey, come in here, sit down, shut up, listen to the guy. It probably would be bored too, <laughs> to be honest with you. But you know, we we incorporate people. We have food. We always break bread before we uh, have our service. We felt that's the fellowship part. And if people come late, they miss out on that. You know, and praying for each other and making connections and jobs and relationships, and so they miss out on that part. A lot of people have PTSD. They lived on the streets for a while. They've been in prison. They've been in gangs. They've been shot at. They've been, you know, like life-threatened. And the average, the average person doesn't understand that. I'm not blaming them, but we don't, the average person doesn't know how to deal with it. So, look, I'm gonna pray for you. Now you stay over there. And I'm going to be in my little country club over here, and I'm going to I'm going to pray for you. Yeah, I, when I went to I won't say the name, but I went I went to a mega church. I felt like the mascot. Like, hey, there's the crazy guy. We'll just pet him, and we'll use him on little clips here and there, and stuff like that. And uh, man, we, we're look. It, it, the Bible's clear. It says you're either for God or against God. You know, so you don't need a crazy story like mine. You don't need a crazy paint job. You know, you're either with God or you're against Him. So. That's the whole thing, and man, when you become a Christian, you buckle your seatbelt, you know, one of those crazy ones, and man, you enjoy the journey, because he's gonna take you places and bring you places and introduce you to people that you've never could imagine doing, and that's what I'm doing. Have you ever felt like uh, you wanted to go back? 
No, but they're, you know, we're all susceptible. I don't care who you are. Christian pastor, a singer, choir, you know, cleanup guy. We're all susceptible to what? Sin. That, that's the common denominator with humanity. We're separated from sin, from God. And uh, yeah, the temptations are there. Uh, somebody uh, else had asked me that. And, uh, you know, yeah, sometimes you, you entertain it in your head, but I know the consequences of it. And I know that's going to put me in a bad place with God, you know. Um, it's not going to please him. I'm a servant of God, so how can I do my will? I already surrendered that when I became a servant to Christ. So, I mean, is it, is it do you stumble? Yeah, of course we do. But we get back up and uh, we keep going. When a new believer comes, man, they can stumble 50 times. Oh, we forgive him. Oh, keep coming back, Bobby. Yeah, okay, no worries. But when a long-time believer stumbles, what do we do? We crush him. You blew it. You, uh, you, then we write him off. What happened to all the forgiveness and the love and the mercy? It's, that, that shouldn't be when I'm going through something and somebody just pats me down and goes, oh, we're praying for you. Be all right, it's gonna be all right. Well, yeah, do, get, do something if somebody's in need. It, it says, the Bible says if you have it and you don't give, then you're not fulfilling the need. You're all, I'll pray for you. Really pray for me right here, I'm standing right in front of you. Hey, I need gas money. Well, give me a few bucks or put, take me to the gas station if you don't trust me. You know, and so, yeah, God, there's one scripture, I don't remember what the scripture is, but it says, God blesses those who bless other people. So if you come out of pocket and then taking on a burden of your burden to me, you know, caring for one another, that, that means your burden becomes my burden. If it's financial, if it's a ride, if it's my time, we take on that burden. We don't just go, hey, you know, Chris, hang in there, brother. Okay, read your Bible. That's, that's not, that's not uh, helping each other. It's not what I want when I'm in need, and it's not what you would probably want if you're watching online. Yeah. And troubles are guaranteed. And I was uh, listening to some sermons this morning, and uh, it was Pastor Tony Evans' son, and he was saying that, hey, the Christianity is, you have to be proactive. You can't be reactive like the police. Hey, something happened. Your walk has to be proactive. Hey, I know something's coming, but I got to be ready. You can't be double-minded. Hey, something's coming. I, if you're either coming out of a storm or going back into another one. It's hitting us, but the peace that God gives us, the peace that he gives us is, man, this is a short life compared to eternity. So yeah, a life miserable, full of trouble and torment or eternity in heaven or hell, you choose. Yeah, I mean, working out, you don't see the results right away. You gotta get your butt in there and it takes time. You know, diet takes time. Uh, it just, it doesn't come overnight, you know, and with your faith, it's not easy. But the reward is pretty darn cool, man. Eternity, come on now. There are times when I feel like I'm just, God's not listening. He is, but I feel that way. Those are feelings. Those are my feelings. God doesn't change. He doesn't get emotional. He doesn't go, oh, I'm overwhelmed. My feelings change, you know, but I notice, and you may notice too, if you're watching, when do you draw, when, when are we the closest with God? When times are really good or when times are really, really bad? That's when you draw close to him. So, you know, sometimes we, we get for, forget to thank him when things are going really good. You know, when you get the job, when you get your little boyfriend or girlfriend, or you get the new home, or whatever, you get the new outfit or whatever, the car, whatever you get. We don't say, hey, you know what, God, thank you. And uh, Pastor Phil Aguilar from Anaheim tells me this. He goes, every day is a Super Bowl. I go, what do you mean, Chief? He goes, I call it Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl Monday, Super Bowl Wednesday, Super Bowl Thursday. Today's Thursday, so I call it Super Bowl Thursday. Today's the day. Today's a big day. Tomorrow's not promised. Yesterday's already in the books. Check out Set Free Church at 320 Date Street in San Diego most every Thursday evening from 5.30 to 7.00. Meet Pastor Taz and join us for free food, music, and fellowship.